right. Good morning or afternoon or night or whatever time it is for you, but it is early for it's us. It's definitely morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if I'd say it's definitely morning because it is dark out there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it depends on how you define morning. Yeah. <laughs> This is how committed we are to you guys here. We're waking up before any child wakes up so that we can come and talk about um, Dostoevsky here. And uh, and now we're on book four. Wow, we're doing this. Um, we are, let's see, we're about page 180, which is... <laughs> Don't know, that's just depressing. No, it's, it's actually fun. I, 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 I'm, I'm quite interested. So, so if we're talking like one... Oh, this actually should, if we're talking like uh, 900 pages about, 180 probably is a, is, is a, is some sort of an easy divisor, divisor of that, but I don't know exactly what well, it no, is. No, so at the end of this, at the end of this book, that puts us to um, like 240, right? End of book. Oh, okay. Four. Yeah, I was looking at the beginning. <laughs> right. I couldn't even talk about two forty. So that's bad. So, so we. I would say it seems that we are over a fourth of the way through. <laughs> yeah. If you, if you just look at the, the the chunk of pages that yeah. that is, that's 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 about a fourth. It's it's respectable at yeah. this point. It's yeah. Respectable. You can sit at a coffee shop and someone's gonna think we're in an airport. Although you're probably not. A, you're not flying anywhere. <laughs> but, <laughs> Maybe coffee shops are are not open, yeah, but hopefully. Yeah, yeah. People are like, wow. That guy's actually reading a lot. Yeah. In the book. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to look like the guy that's just cracked the book open to look like a reader at a coffee shop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be that guy. Um, but you, but you really, you should look at the chunk you've done and um, and stand with with some pride here that yeah. that, that you're actually doing this. Okay. Yeah. And if you're listening to this podcast, not only are you reading. But, you, but you've been through a few hours of just yeah, listening. Yeah. Each one's been about an hour, a little over an hour. So yeah, this is yeah the, usually over an hour. Uh, and a uh, few of them have been about an hour and a half. Yeah, and I, this is the fourth or fifth one. Fifth. Well, this is, yeah, I don't know. This might be the fifth or sixth. Fifth or sixth, yeah. I think it's six, actually. Six. I think it's six. Yeah, Whatever it is. Um, uh, we are, we're ready to talk about lacerations here. Yeah. Um, early in the morning lacerations. Lacerations. <laughs> <laughs> um which is uh, so you know things are getting things are getting nastier here, and of course when you get nasty in Dostoevsky, you know you're getting to the meat of things. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> Dostoevsky does not hold back. Mm -mm. Poverty and mm -mm. sin mm -mm. seem to be his specialties, which maybe we could say, in a sense, is what were Christ's specialties. I mean, he yeah. he sort of got yelled at for doing that, right? Actually, just the gospel today or yesterday, I don't remember now. Um, it says, uh, you know, I came for the, not for the just, but for sinners. And I think Dostoevsky um, really takes that revelation of Christ seriously because yeah. I think that's, I mean, I think that's really what his books are about, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, that, that salvation is about the salvation of sinners and that we're sinners and that our salvation comes about on account of the fact that we're sinners. And it wouldn't come about if we were just. And if we think we're just, which is which is how I've always interpreted Christ's saying there. If we think we're just, then we're not saved, because mm -hmm. the one who thinks he's just is the one who doesn't need a physician, mm -hmm. right? And the one who doesn't need a savior, and the one who doesn't need a savior is the one who isn't going to go to the savior, right. and therefore you're not saved. Which is this, of course, is very paradoxical, right? The just are not saved because nobody's just, yeah. and, and that's actually, I think, kind of. Yeah. Maybe the heart of what Dostoevsky thinks about love. Yeah, yeah no, it's it. That also just lines up with John, Gospel of John's. Uh, um, mm -hmm. Those that are blind are the ones that are going to be able to see. Yeah, and, and those that think they see. And he who says, he who says he has no sin, is a liar. As we read in Greek. As we read in Greek in our workbook the other day. But if, if I could quote it in Greek, that would be even cooler. Yeah. Um, but I definitely cannot do that. No. <laughs> yet. <laughs> yet. Yet. That's right. Yeah. So I thought this was a great transition. Um, from the last the last paragraph. So this is the right after last Ali paragraph of part one. Right? Sorry. Yeah. Last paragraph of part one. Yeah. Uh, as Alyosha finishes reading um, uh, Lisa, Lisa's uh, letter, and he has this this thought of sort sort of gently laughs and then doesn't he stops and then he laughs again 
uh, and then he says, God have mercy upon uh, all of them. Have all these unhappy and turbulent souls in, uh, let's see, where am I? in thy keeping and set them in the right path. All ways are thine. Save them according to thy wisdom. Thou art love. Thou wilt send joy to all. And then you, you turn the page. You have Father, Father, the chapter of Father Farrapont. And, um, but it begins with, with the short little, sort of the short little exhortation of, of Zosima. And because he thinks he's, uh, or, uh, I mean, he, he, he's basically pretty sure he's dying. Right. Yeah. And it's kind of, yeah, it, it's, it's coming. And so he seems to be, I think, the, I think it's in here that he sort of speaks, um, just without, need of you know organization or he'll just kind of it seems like he just he'll just start rolling and yeah. um <laughs> and people just start listening and it kind of goes from here to here and kind of flows all over um but i i thought that it was a, a really fascinating um transition you have you have kind of the plot in some sense of of, of the the book culminating well, actually, as we'll see, it's not it doesn't culminate here. But no, we got like seven or yeah, a good go. <laughs> a good a good chunk of of um, of what lies at the heart of of a lot of pain. You know, culminating at the end of part one, and then you get Zosima, the short little exhortation at the bottom of um, it's the it's the first page of this one eighty one one eighty one. Um. His speech was somewhat disconnected. He spoke of many things. He seemed anxious before the moment of death to say everything he had said, he had not said in, in his life, and not simply for the sake of instructing them, but as though thirsting to share with all men and all creation his joy and ecstasy, and once more in his life to open his whole heart. And if you remember the last chapter, it was give, give them joy, right. um, I believe is what Alyosha's prayer was. Um, I think there's, there's something along Yeah, that will send joy, send to, joy all. to all. That's, that's the last line, actually. Yeah, yeah. And then here you have Zosima, um, you know, just thirsting to uh, share with all men uh, his joy. Uh, and then he goes on to talk about this incredible theme, which I think we may have, I don't know if we saw this earlier on in book two, but love one another, fathers, he, he went on, love God's people, because we have come here to shut ourselves within these walls. We are no holier than those that are outside, but on the contrary. From the very fact of coming here, each of us has confessed to himself that he is worse than others, than all men on earth. And the longer the monk lives in his seclusion, the more keenly he must recognize that. Else he would have had no reason to come here. When he realizes that he is not only worse than others, but that he is responsible to all men for all and everything, for all human sins, national and individual, only then the aim of our seclusion is attained. For know, dear ones, that every one of us is undoubtedly responsible for all men and everything on earth, not merely through the general sinfulness of creation, but each one personally for all mankind and every individual man. Mm -hmm. uh, really specific um, claim he's making that, that it is each individual who really truly is responsible to all men for all their sins. Uh, and now this is, I think, a very puzzling, confusing doctrine for many people, and it, we're going to see it come up again and again. But I think this coming right after you have all of this um, this disaster yeah. in the Karamazov <laughs> family, this coming, I think, is it's no accident that he just jumps right into this short little you know exhortation yeah. of of this. Um, but I think that. That's an incredible, um, and it, it really is, I think, kind of the, the, the heart of communio theology, like Ratzinger 
sort of theology. I mean, uh -huh. this is to take seriously the body of Christ. Uh huh. Yeah, it's it, it, there's definitely a metaphysics of of beauty here. One where there's a recognition that there's not just you and then me, and then we happen to do bad things, which is the typical understanding that I yeah. that I think everybody grows up with. I shouldn't say just I. I think everybody. Uh, let's it, let's just center it in in America. It mm -hmm. probably grows up with. It. Yeah, well, um, it was in Russia too, because he's sure kind of combating yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, and and so I, I think here we have this real metaphysical understanding that we are we are not merely ourselves, but that we're in each other. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you know uh, I like how you started this, and I and I want to go back to this joy thing, right? It, he, he, he talks because he wants to share with all men and all creation his joy and ecstasy. And then he starts talking about how responsible for everybody's sin. So there's this, there's this paradox, I think, here where a recognition of one's sinfulness and responsibility for the disaster of the world because of one's sinfulness is not, and, and, and maybe this, this chapter called Father mm -hmm. Farapont, I don't know if this is the contrast that, that, that's supposed to be mm -hmm. between them. Mm -hmm. But it's not that when you recognize your own sinfulness or the badness of the world, that then you're depressed. Right. And then uh, you see the world as a crappy place. And, uh, and you see yourself as sort of, um, I don't know, the source of the crap. Yeah. And, and therefore you go back to your room and scowl. And you escape, <laughs> you escape the crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is this is a place to like monasticism is a place holy, to run away. Yeah, it's 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 sort of a safe haven for holy holiness. Right now, he's not saying don't don't join the monastery. Yeah, yeah. so the, and that's important, I think. But that's not what it is. Mm -hmm. Instead, once you recognize this, and I think here we go to this theme: are true to yourself, mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. don't lie to yourself. That's the source of joy, right? And and also, and and in the next section here, I mean, this whole. This whole mini sermon here is is worth meditating on. Um, if I could read a little more here. Yeah, yeah, please. Um, please. Only through the, he says, for monks are not a special sort of men, but only what all men ought to be. Now, I don't think he's saying all men ought to be monks. Uh, I think he's saying all men ought to be the ones who recognize themselves as personally sinful for everything, as responsible for everything, and and as as the ones who recognize themselves as worse than everyone else, mm -hmm. which is actually basically quoting St. Paul, right? For monks are not a special sort of men, but only what all men ought to be. Only through that knowledge, our heart grows soft with infinite, universal, inexhaustible love. So the knowledge of sin, right? That the, the accusation of oneself is the source of love. Mm -hmm. Then every one of you will have the power to win over the whole world by love, to wash away the sins of the world with your tears. Each of you keep watch over your heart and confess your sins to yourself unceasing, unceasingly. Be not afraid of your sins. And so it's this sort of like, that's the confess your sin to yourself is that being true to yourself, not lying to yourself. Um, not thinking that you're better than someone mm -hmm. else. Not thinking that you're great in any way, right? Even if you're the Christian, even if you're, even if you are the raven, once a raven, always a raven, listening to this podcast, and you've made it to number six, and you're watching the numbers dwindle and you're on like, the oh. little YouTube ticker, and you're like, I'm better than those losers who signed up and said they were going to do it, and aren't doing it, right? And they couldn't even keep watch an hour. <laughs> yeah, we're not even asking for watch, just listening. No, listen. Listen. You can close your eyes if you want <laughs> No, it's like like it, this is the thing, right? If 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 you're if you are if you think that, then you're lying to yourself. And, and gosh, we know this in our heart of hearts, right? Yeah. That that we are the sinful ones, and we know that if anyone really had this like vision where they could see me through and through, right? The one who reads souls, if you want to put it that way, which is which actually what what some people said that Elder Zosima did. Right. It doesn't seem like he does, mm -hmm. um, but people were afraid he, of him, right? But I, I don't want to. Yeah, go ahead. If you have, but I, I think he, he can read souls, uh, at least apparently so, because he knows himself so well. And yeah, he yeah. knows his own sin. It's and, like, and, it's like, and the metaphysics of beauty, right? Yeah, and it's like all sin, in each other. sin is sin. And um, in a sense, if you, if you really understand one sin, you kind of understand 
all sin. Yeah, I think is is kind of like. It, it, and, and I think the important thing about that, though, is, is, is his own recognition of his own sin, which I know is going to come up here mm-hmm. um, in, in, in maybe the book the six. Next, yeah, the next book. Or book five. Probably book six. Okay. Uh, when it comes up, I, 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 and I, I'm, I'm not giving any spoilers because I actually don't, don't know this book yeah. very well <laughs> so, at all. <laughs> um, but, I, but I think this idea, and this is what he's saying here, right? Knowing yourself, confessing your sins to yourself unceasingly, unceasingly is what softens the heart for the other so when you look at the other and you recognize that person's a loser you don't think what a loser i'm so much better than that person you think i'm a loser too i'm just like that person and i know how hard it is to be a loser Mm -hmm. and therefore there's where love comes right um and and i wonder i mean to get theological here i mean i mean I do teach theology. Yeah, <laughs> you know, get the get, 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 get theological get, get here. Theological. This, I mean, and this, this passage has fascinated me for years and years, but in, in recent years, even more so. And we've talked about this before, uh, not on this, not on this mm-hmm. podcast, but this idea of Jesus becoming sin, um, and what that means, and I, and I wonder if it has something to do with this, this idea of. Um, being in a deeper unity with those who are all sinners by like like for Zosima it's going to be my personal sin right for Christ we're not going to say something like that but maybe we'll say something more drastic in fact Paul does mm-hmm. yeah. that he becomes sin mm-hmm. whatever that means right and, uh-huh. and and we could go deep into what that means but let's not uh, but uh-huh. I, but I think there's something about the unity with the Karamazovs, the Black Stain Brothers, yeah, yeah. that Christ has when he becomes sin. Right? But here mm-hmm. I am giving my own sermon. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah. But he ends this kind of sermon by saying, uh, and this is this is Dostoevsky's real, also obsession right, about atheism. Right? Um, in fact, wasn't this book supposed to be part of a trilogy called Atheism? Atheism, yeah. yeah. I, think it was, I think it was. I mean, if, if one thousand page book wasn't enough, he was thinking about three. <laughs> Yeah, but Demons was, I think, supposed to be a part of that too, right? Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. But um, he says, um, be not proud. Again, I say be not proud. Be not proud neither to the little nor to the great. Hate not those who reject you, who insult you, who abuse and slander you. There's Christ, right? But here's the dust asking and twist. Hate not the atheists, the teachers of evil, the materialists. I mean not only the good ones, for there are many good ones among them, especially in our day. Hate not even the wicked ones. Remember them in your prayers thus. Save, O oh Lord, all those who have none to pray for them. Save, too, all those who will not pray. And add, it is not in pride that I make mm-hmm. this prayer, O oh Lord, for I am lower than all men. I mean, this is the tax collector and the right, Pharisee. Right? Right. Um, but but it, it's sort of like the tax collector for the modern world, right? which is like stuffed with atheists. In fact, we're all atheists in some real sense, right? Mm-hmm. Just like we're all sinners in this in this sense. Like we're we're all yeah. atheists, and and we're all trying to support each other in uh, overcoming atheism. I, yeah. I I sort of feel like that's that's what mm-hmm. that's what the liberal arts have become in the modern world is 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 a support against atheism, the atheist in us, who is in all of us. Yeah, because we're all moderns. Right. right, and that's why I think it's unhealthy, just as it's unhealthy to hate the sinner. Um, it's also unhealthy to hate the atheists because I think it's going to actually come about at, it's go, or it's going to result in um, your own your own corruption. Yeah. Right. Just as just as you'll you'll start to lie to yourself and say I'm not like that in any way. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that's going to which which just is not true. I mean, no. if 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 you look at your heart of hearts. It, you know that you're a terrible sinner and that you're an atheist. <laughs> I mean, in, in, yeah. in, 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 and this sounds like almost scandalous coming and, from like the, the guys who teach about Jesus yeah, Christ to yeah. all these kids, but, yeah. but this but, is like the modern problem. And, and the, great, the great mystery is how can this confession be itself the cause of joy? Yeah. Right. So it's, that's, that's what we're going to, that's what we're going to see play out. Yeah. And I think in this, in this work. And uh, I think it's because, I mean, I think he's already pointing at it here. It's because this confession is only through that knowledge our heart grows soft with infinite, universal, and exhaustible love. It's because that confession bring, yeah. is the source of love. 
And love yeah. is ecstasy. Unless yeah. unless that confession is made in, in pride. Right. Right. And which then, is which is then not really a confession. And I think that's what I think I think Father Farapon, I mean we can kinda of move into that. Yeah, part, yeah, let's think, do that. Let's I think do that. Otherwise we're gonna be stuck in the sermon, which is amazing. Yeah, which is great. If you gotta get stuck somewhere. Um, <laughs> So I think, um, so Father Farapont was, was this old monk who didn't like the elder tradition at all. Right. And in fact, before he even knew the elder, any elders, before he even had any experience with this, I believe this is somewhere, I can't find it exactly, but he, he had already judged this tradition, not from having ever met anyone that was... Um, committed to an elder or an elder himself, uh-huh. but simply the idea of this was one that he he rejected. And so, of course, when he then comes to the monastery and sees Zosima, uh, he's he's already made this you know declaration that this is this is a, this is a degradation of of Christianity, uh-huh. um, and everything that Zosima does is now going to be interpreted through like his. His way of of um, thinking about what the monastery is, what the fasts are for. Yeah, um, yeah. I, th- I thought that was interesting that when this when this uh, this monk from uh, Saint Sylvester's monastery comes to him, like one of the first questions he asks him is, mm-hmm. "Well, tell me about your monastery. How do you observe the fasts?" Like that was like yeah. that was like the defining element of 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 the monastery. And now now. To, to be honest, we in the post-industrial modern era don't don't know how to fast and don't recognize yeah. the goodness of fast and, right. and, and the glory of it because we have something that nobody has ever had in their lives, an overabundance of food and especially meat, yeah. right? And, yeah. and there's something very weird about that. Um, so I don't want to diss fasting here, right? And, that, and that's yeah, not no. what's meant to be happening here. No, But, but there's a question of what the heart of Christianity is. Yeah. And and I, I mean I don't think Dostoevsky is, you know, no. dissing any of this aesthetic no. um, practice because the, the this monk who thinks oh look at look at Father Farapon, he's so um, rigorous, strenuous in his fasting, what a great holy person he is. He himself describes his fasts and they seem pretty legitimate practices when it comes to trying to live in the, an aesthetic Monastic. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's. I mean, he, he seems to take this very seriously, and then um, Father Farapon seems to suggest you. You know, you you might as well just be feasting, uh, and and so I I think what you have is this person who um, doesn't. It's 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 almost as if this monk is coming here. Because he's just looking for something greater than than his um, his way of life, and Father Farapont is basically confirming, yes, my way of life is greater than your way of life, <laughs> um, <laughs> and and you you're you're never going to be able to like obtain this. Yeah, right? and and as I mean, it's kind of this really odd conversation that unfolds about all the great things that Father Farapont does, like being able to see demons uh-huh. and all these. Losers in in his monastery can't see him because they're so sinful, uh-huh. um, and they don't even smell the rotting devil in the corner. That got its tail pinched. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and and and, I, and he's like, I can do this. And oh, and by the way, I can I can see the the Holy Ghost or is it Spirit? I forget which one he talks to because <laughs> he makes a distinction. <laughs> yeah. Right. It, but Holy I mean, Ghost, I think, is what. The but the idea, I think, is. Is this 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 person has come here? That is Farapont has come here to um, live a um, a life which is going to be for like the like the the, the, the best, the good, the the, the higher up, mm-hmm. and um, whereas right before at the very beginning of this chapter, you have the exact opposite being asserted by Zosima that no, you don't come here to do that. You come here to do, um, um, to, to, to make the confession of your own weakness, your own lowliness. Right. Um, 
And that's that's the point of the monastery. Doesn't he say? And it looks like Father Pierpon is doing the exact opposite. Yeah. Doesn't he say? I don't I don't know if it's in this speech or in the, in, in an earlier one, that that the monk who does not come here and admit that he is the sinner and that's why he's here, just isn't a monk. Yeah. He says that somewhere. I don't remember if it's in this yeah. speech, but I think it's earlier in chap maybe in book two. Yeah. Where yeah. He's, that sounds. He, there, he's he's explaining what a monk is, and he says that's just not a true monk. And I, I wonder if that Father Fairpont mm. isn't the sort of the sign of that yeah. and being being the being the not true monk. And look how it, so look how it's, so the conversation starts. The very first thing I think with Father a bow. Fairpont it starts says, with a bow. Eighty five, yeah, bottom of eighty five. Um, Father Fairpont cell stood. Um, uh, maybe he will speak as you are a stranger, and maybe you'll get nothing out of him. Uh, the beekeeper had warned him. Uh, Father P- Farapont was sitting at the door of his cell on a low bench. A huge old elm was lightly rustling overhead. There was an evening freshness in the air. The monk from Abdorsk bowed down before the saint and asked his blessing. And here's here's what Father Farapont does or says. Do you want me to bow down to you, monk? Said Father Farapon. Get up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now this is, I, I mean, I think it's supposed to be, oh, look, I'm not worthy to be bowed down to. But, but really, I think this is just a great, like, prideful act. Yeah. It's, and, and it's a humongous contrast to the giant, basically, probably the biggest episode yeah. that's happened so far. Which is Father Zosima in the midst of this crazy Karamazov fight, bowing to the ground in front of Dimitri, not not yes. another monk who actually observes yeah. fasts, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know who knows what he if he eats mushrooms or not. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 you know he bows to this like the lowest of the low here, and this this monk and. It, he actually like says, "Do you want me to bow down to you?" Like mm-hmm. almost this, like this, this should, uh, this isn't going to happen. Yeah, right? yeah. And sort of this mocking of the bow, whereas the bow has for 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 Zosima seems to be something uh, central to his own, maybe maybe like an incarnation of his own sort of mm-hmm. monasticism, spirituality, theology, metaphysics, whatever. Right? It's right. all in this. Act mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and it's rejected by Farapont. Right. Yeah, and I think that's it's it's um, I mean, really the the humility of Zosima, um, and sort of the receptivity of Zosima and the the, the pride um, of Farapont greatly contrasted. I think this mm-hmm. is this is important, and I think. This, at least for me, calls out reflection on who are the Zosimas in my life and who are the Farapons. Yeah. Right. And, oh, and, I, and more. Yeah. Am I, I was a say, Zosima? What am I? Yeah. What am I? Right? right. And 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 it, here's the paradox, right? If you admit that you're a Farapont, then you're a Zosima. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> because it's the one who admits his yeah. own sort of pride and sinfulness that... I, I, I'm going to keep going back to that line, which I, which I just think is beautiful. Only through that knowledge, our heart grows soft with infinite, universal, inexhaustible love. Mm-hmm. Like, gosh, do do I not pray for this like all the time? Like, uh, give me a soft heart. I mean, I don't use that language, but I'm going to start using that language. Mm-hmm. A soft heart that has universal, infinite, inexhaustible love, because that's that's the salvation of the world. Yeah. Right? And he even says that. Right? He says, uh, uh, then only will you have the power to win over the whole world by love and to wash away the sins of the world with your tears. Yeah, because, yeah, it makes sense. If, 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 you, if you have been the one responsible for all, for yeah. all the sins, then um, you have to atone for those. Yeah. Right? And so the way you do it is in this way. So, like, of course, if you, if you are the cause of the, 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 uh, the fall of the universal man in some... In some I don't want to get too scandalous, but like through your participation in in Adam, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, then you can also be the cause of the redemption of the world through your participation in Christ, right? In the it's new not, Adam, the second Adam, yeah, the second Adam, yeah. Right? Um, and I think I think this is um, very scandalous idea, maybe, but I think it's to, to really take seriously the um, the, 
the, the, the body of Christ metaphysics and also the, the destruction of the body of Christ, right? The crucifixion of the body of Christ is, you know, hap- occurs through a single sin. So if we really want to say, you know, it was I that crucified Christ yeah. in my sins, then if you're really going to say that and not just say, no, it was really those loser Roman soldiers. Right. Or the um, Jews. Or yeah. the Jews or what have you. Yeah. And, and it, it, wasn't, it wasn't me. Um, but we can say it in like neat poetical language to kind of make us feel connected. But yeah. It's not really. Yeah. Yeah. Then if you're going to take it seriously, you have to, you have to say something radical like this. And it means it has to be applied everywhere. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so the, and that's, I think, what Dostoevsky is doing here. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, the, the way that this is always something that I'm worried about, my own cause of the sinfulness, is sort of the microcosm of the family, which which really my sin has just been, I mean, um, just injected into my children. I mean, mm-hmm. and I see that, and I know that, and I, and I pray about this all the time. And and I know, and I've seen it when I when I actually in these rare moments actually do have real love, soft love, yeah. um, a soft heart. I see how it's redemptive and atoning and 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 transformative, but not redemptive, not atoning in like a, a mechanistic way where I'm making up for the things that I've done in the past, but actually like ontologically changing of the people who have been screwed up by me, yeah. Yeah. right? Um, and and. Mm-hmm. But that's but I, I think the family is sort of like a hyper, a hyper microcosm of, of of all of reality in the Zosima kind of way, so that when I look at my students, when I look at my friends, when I look at anybody I encounter, um, going back to Zosima at the very beginning when he talked yeah. about or was it Alyosha? I, I don't remember when they were first sort of introducing them, and he said, you know, if you walk by the child, or maybe this hasn't come up yet, and you don't smile. Right. Yeah. Um, what 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 is that going to do to that person yeah, that's forever? Book, book six. You do ah, remember. Shoot. You do remember. I, I do remember book six. <laughs> that's only because I, I I listened to it, you know, like a year ago. But I I think that 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 idea is is at the heart of of, of this whole thing. Yeah. But, yeah. but maybe we should get past the the monastery here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Unless yeah. there's something else in this. No, chapter. no, no. no. I mean, there's a, there's a lot in this chapter. Yeah. But, but we can we can um we can move move on. I. I the, Sort of the trans the transition the handing over of Alyosha from Zosima to Paisi, yeah, I think was interesting. But um, we don't we don't have to. Um, it'll come up more when Zosima actually does die. Okay. So. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's interesting that 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 just as you, you that he could kind of see Zosima in Father Paisi, and and I think we can see Zosima in Alyosha because at the very end of the last point he said give them all joy yeah. and Alyosha has this thing where he's not prideful and he's like recognizing I mean what did he yeah. say to, to Dimitri right mm-hmm. I, I'm blushing because I am you mm-hmm. and because I'm at the bottom of the ladder and yeah. and trust me I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll climb that thing right yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> which is which is like the perfect monk <laughs> yeah. yeah right, right. right. Uh, interestingly enough there's just I mean there's a real paradox here and, and, and a real contrast with the way that we understand Christianity as mm-hmm. being the ones who are seeking perfection, which we are, but perfection is something different. It's it, it's this yeah. recognition of sin and the softening yeah. of the heart of love because of my own, yeah, my own brother, my own my own fraternity within the black stain of the Karamazov. Yeah, family. it's like what T. S. Eliot said. Of course, it is. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> but I think he's quoting Saint John. The, the, the way up is the way, and that's actually quoting Heraclitus. The way up is the way down. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know the the. To, to go to where you are, to go to, was it, to go to where you are not, you must by you must go by the way in which you are not. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, so I, I think this. Yeah, this, or uh, or as or as Zosima says to that one lady, uh, maybe maybe it was Holocaust, right? It, when when you when you find out that you're not anywhere near your goal. Yeah, you're then there, right then, right? Yeah. It's, it's right, right then. then. That you, At that very moment is yeah. the, is the words that he yeah. uses. Is that very which is kind of like. To say you know you pass through the dark night, which is sort of like the complete like all is all is blind, all is lost. Yeah, 
Um, yeah, but then of course there's this paradox where the Dark Knight is the brightness. It becomes, and, and it's not yeah. that you pass through it and you've gotten to the other side. It just yeah. is it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, yeah. But that goes really. That, that gets into a lot of the stuff. So, so then, so so keep. We can sort of stay at the at the surface now for a little bit, um, just to track the plot. So then, Alyosha. The outer plot. The outer plot, <laughs> yeah. which which is kind of. I don't want to say it's, it's not important because that would be to completely destroy the inner plot. Yeah, that would be to deny beauty. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but but I but I uh, let's just trying to follow out. So he goes to his father's because his father asked him to come there, and he and he comes, and his father you can tell because of his brandy the night before doesn't exactly remember, but he then it seems like he does kind of remember, mm-hmm. and he has sort of this mixed feeling about why Alyosha is here. But it seems to be Alyosha's just kindness and complete devotion to his father that makes his father realize, like, oh, no, he's not he's not here out of any reason other than like, my service. Yeah. And he kind of has, has a heart-to-heart in some sense with him. Which seems to be, like, people recognize that in Alyosha mm-hmm. all, all the time, actually. But th- there's something interesting about what his father says in 192, where I was thinking about Zosima again. <laughs> And I was thinking, you know, when Zosima thinks, I'm a sinner, I have unity with sinners, right? He loves, the more they sin, the more he loves them, right? It's said in his in the description of his character. But listen to him, what he says here. Um, he says, uh, when I get older, the wenches won't come, I'll need my money. Yeah. <laughs> which, which, I mean, this, yes. this, this is like, it seems very despicable. But he's not pretending like he doesn't yeah. think this way. Yeah. There's yeah. something true about him right Mm -hmm. and he says this right you may as well know this is about uh, three-fourths way down you may as well know for i mean to go on in my sins to the end let me tell you for sin is sweet all abuse it but all men live in it only others do it on the sly and i openly and so all the other sinners fall upon me for being so simple and your paradise alexei fyodorovich is not to my taste let me tell you that and it's not the proper place for a gentleman in your paradise, even if it exists. I believe that I fall asleep, don't wake up again, and that's all. Okay, so here's the atheism in him, right? But, but I think the, the key here is this. Um, I'll do it on the sly, and I openly. Like, he's just admitting, yeah, I'm a sinner. I'm a mm-hmm, sinner. Mm-hmm. And, and, and sin is sweet. And he's basically saying, like everyone is, it's just... Yeah. Uh, most people do it on the sly. Yeah. Most, most people know... Well, actually, most people like to forget their own sinfulness. Right. Um, and he's, he's saying, like, look, I don't want to forget it. I just do it openly. And I don't even hide it. it. It this reminds me of that Delubach quote where he says, you know, that the, the 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 falsest fallacy is one step away from the truest truth. Yeah. Right? And and I think this is I mean, if you can believe that we're saying this about Fyodor, right? Who is like uh, you know, Dimitri asked the question, does yeah. this, should this should a man like this even be alive? Yeah. yeah. Um I'm saying that he's like very close to Zosima, yeah. um, like one step away. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that he's not like in the pit of sinfulness. Oh, right, right. right. Um, but the pit of sinfulness is one step away from admitting you're in the pit of sinfulness so that your heart can soften. Right? Yeah. And I, and, and, but he is admitting it. Right? He is admitting it. He's just not admitting that that's not where he should be. Right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's the change. That's the change that he needs to go about it. Yeah, which I, I, which I, I don't think he'll make it to because I I, yeah. I know the bad things are going to happen to yeah. him soon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, the the sin party is about to about to run out of steam, <laughs> or or at least uh, start very seriously in another. <laughs> yeah, no, there's going to be a, we're going to transition to deadly sins. <laughs> Moving on to the next one, <laughs> another one of the seven. Yeah. Um, but I think that that's important, right? That he that admits is, his own thing. And, and he says, listen, everybody's like this. Mm-hmm, I'm just doing mm-hmm. it openly and everybody hates me for it. They abuse me for it. And yet they, they're just like me. Right. Which, which is uh, like that language is very close to Sosima. It's very close to Sosima. Yeah. And, and doesn't he say that he's, he's afraid of Yvonne in this? In this oh, yeah. This he says film. he's not like us. Right? This, is, um, this is on 194. Yeah. He says... Um, uh, he's talking about yeah. Ivan is not one of us. He says he's not one of us right in, in soul. Right? He says Ivan loves nobody. Yeah. Ivan's not one of us. People like Ivan are not our sort, my boy. They're like a cloud of dust. 
when the wind blows, the dust will be gone. And, and, and he does say at, at some point that he's, he is afraid of Ivan more than anything. Yeah. Um, and that he's not afraid of Dimitri, which is interesting because Dimitri's the one that kicked his face in the night before. <laughs> but he says, oh, no. It's, yeah. and, and Ivan's the one who protected him, right? I remember Ivan is the one who held Dimitri yeah. back, pulled him back off of him. Yeah. But he says, he says he's afraid of Ivan more than anything. And he, and he even says that he, Fyodor says, I know you, Alyosha, love Dimitri. And I don't, I'm not afraid of your loving him. So, I mean, it's almost as if he knows, he knows Dimitri well, right? Fyodor and, and Dimitri are maybe the same person, mm-hmm. right? I mean, they're like character-wise, they're incredibly similar. And he even compares himself, I haven't thought about this um, t- until now, so there might be other things, but he even compares himself, I believe, a couple points too. I was like that when I was younger, and, and if I was like that now, I would yada yada. yada. Yeah, yeah. And it, he seems to be, you know, making making a lot of comparisons with his youth and and Dimitri, um, and mm-hmm. so maybe maybe there's a sense in which yeah, he hates this guy because he's going to kill him or trying to he's trying to kill him, but there's something in in, in Ivan that is even more terrifying. There's this unknown. It seems to almost not be Karamazov like, yeah. Which makes you wonder, like, what is Dimit? What is sorry? What is what is um, Ivan supposed to be representing here? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and it might be a non-human. Not to say that Ivan's non-human. It's just the representation of his character in this might be more, you know, demonic than than, than human. Uh huh. And, and and there's something about because he's not a sensualist. Yeah, I was gonna say I was, that's exactly what I was gonna say. Mm-hmm. There's something where he is not just like moving with the senses, mm-hmm. whereas Dimitri definitely right. He he kicks his father's face. Mm-hmm. His mm-hmm. his his sensuality seems to be to be wrath. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, Fyodor's is lust and mm-hmm. and and, uh, and drink. Right, yeah. um, Alexei. As yeah. we see here, yeah. uh-huh. right, uh-huh. where he comes and and he's he 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 flips out on uh, Katerina and Ivan and says, "I see it all now," yeah. and yeah. he just moves on this yeah. this idea that he has. He's a sensualist, and he mm-hmm. admits he's a sensualist he, at the because end, he's yeah. he's at, he's at the bottom of the ladder. He's going to yeah. climb, and he, and he kind of becomes ashamed at this like this this hasty move to say okay i got it all figured out like a like a crossword puzzle he does but uh, can i jump ahead yeah, yeah. okay yeah. he he does get ashamed at it but there's this really interesting line in here um, which has to do with uh, i think again showing the power of zosima on him um, if i can find it oh this is so good when i read it i was like this is this is the beginning of lacerations in the cottage right maybe um, or no, no. Yeah, yeah. That's like after he leaves, right before he gets to. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so top of two seventeen, um, where it's talking about him being ashamed. Um, Alyosha, um, Alyosha felt practically certain of this. Where he thinks that where he's going is where that schoolboy is going to be. And of course, he's right. Um, but uh, thinking of another subject was a relief, right? Because the subject that he was thinking about was that he blew up at Katerina. And, and sort of like maybe drove her into hysterics, right? Because she goes into hysterics. And <laughs> right. Madame Holikoff yeah. says yeah. never never trust a woman's tears. Um, yeah. Which was very interesting. Uh, thinking of another subject was a relief, and he resolved to think no more about the, quote, mischief he had done, and not to torture himself with remorse, but to do what he had to do, let come what would. At that thought, he was completely comforted. Turning in the street... Blah 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 blah. So he moves on, mm-hmm. right? So so yeah, he does this sensualist thing, right? And 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 yeah, he's sort of beating himself up about it. But there's a point where he says, "This is stupid. I shouldn't be beating myself up about this. Let's yeah. move on." Right. And 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 there's a real like that that moment of like, the one who beats himself up about his sin is the one who's in pride, right? Um, yeah. And 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 the one who doesn't have joy and ecstasy, which Zosima does. So what does he do? He says, "I got to live the present moment. Mm-hmm. What am I doing now?" What do I need to worry about now? If I worry about myself and how I failed here, then all I'm saying is uh, I'm greater than, than that. And, and to, to, to live in the present moment and not to beat yourself up about something, I think, is, this, is, is to admit I'm not greater than that. Of course I would do something stupid like that. Yeah. Um, 
but let's move on because yeah. I got a life to live and there's yeah. there's people to love now, right? Yeah. And I think that that's I think that his moving away from that, even though it takes him a while to do that, right? Um, his moving away from that is a sign of him being a protege of Father Zosa. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a good point. So I thought that two seventeen was actually a really important moment, um, and and it, not a lot is sort of like made of it in the text itself. But I, I wonder what, I mean, we don't have to get into this. I wonder what Dostoevsky was thinking when he wrote this. But I'm thinking that this is a sign of here is here is living out the Zosima project, right? yeah. or 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 living out love. Maybe is is all you have to really say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so I didn't. I didn't mean to jump all. No, around. no, no, no. no. <laughs> um, so we have. So we have. So he goes to. Um, uh, to his father's, and then he then he's on his way to. Um, the Hawk, Hawk, Holocaust. Hol- Holocaust. and he he meets the schoolboys who yep. are throwing stones at this other boy who turns out to be Elusha down the road, mm-hmm. um, and and they're. They're um, they're doing doing a lot of harm to him, and, and Alyosha is confused by why are they why are they trying to stone this this boy to death, basically, and why is the boy throwing stones at Alyosha now? And they, they're not he's not throwing at the the um, the boys, but not at him. And it, it's it's this really great sort of mystery that I mean a three page mm-hmm. mystery or whatever that, that gets unfolded there, and then he gets to the holo- Holocaust. Has this exchange with um, with uh, Lise? Uh, well, Alyosha's finger gets bitten right. rather <laughs> hard. It seems to the bone. To the bone. <laughs> Nasty. <laughs> Can't imagine that. Um, but that's that that all of that exchange with the schoolboys is really important for what comes down the road. Um, and I mean, so I, I'm I. I mean, there's a, there's there's a, a lot over these these several pages, um, but I found the the conversation that Alyosha had with the general who turned out who or who is that schoolboy's father, Elusha. Um, that to be an interesting one. So so and and while um, while Alyosha is at the Holocaust, he's commissioned by. Um, Katerina, right, mm-hmm. to, to bring money, 200 rubles, to to this general. And it turns out that that um, it's kind of this great act of coincidence, providence, that he's he's now given a reason to go there, right, to the, that house. Um, and so I'm interested in 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 what follows the uh, lacerations in the yeah the drawing room. But so, I mean, if you want to, if you want to talk about something. No, about no, it. no. I, I mean, I know we're we're running low on yeah. time here, um, and I think uh, let's go to that. Um, uh, but we, we should point out that uh, again, this is Katerina. I mean, this this there's this there's this big question of what is Katerina doing, moving herself towards Dmitri, right? right? And 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 this is sort of what he beats himself up about because he screams and he says, "You really love Ivan. You you only love your pride." In, in loving Dimitri, right? It all comes from pride, he says on 2.12. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you, you like to contemplate your heroic fidelity, which is kind of what Dimitri told Alyosha yeah. earlier. He said, she doesn't love me. Mm-hmm. She loves mm-hmm. her, her, own virtue. her own virtue. I think that's how he put it. Um, and, and what happens, right? After he sort of calls her out and she sort of runs into the other room and freaking out um, that, that, uh, that he sort of said this, then she comes out and she says, "I want to, I want you to give this guy two hundred dollars because Dimitri beat him up." Yeah. Um, and here, like, I'm asking the question: like, Well, why do you want to give this guy for two hundred dollars, um, two hundred rubles, right? Because, mm-hmm. uh, because it, is it because again, right? She says, "I want to give it to him as simply as a token of sympathy." On page two fourteen, um, and so he's supposed to give this money to this guy because Dimitri beat him up, but Dimitri doesn't even care about Katerina yeah. and Katerina keeps doing these things for him and and I don't know if it's like this attempt to be Christ-like or uh, but 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 it seems like maybe what Alyosha 
sort of said, and he's sort of doubting whether it was right what he said or not. But I wonder if what mm-hmm. he said is true that Katerina really it does just love herself and yeah. love her own like heroic virtue in, in 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 sort of committing herself to this sinner, and she sort of sees this idea as being like the way that a human should live. Yeah, but not. For the sake of the sinner, yeah. but for the sake of it's, her own awesomeness. It's like, I should be great towards other people because that'll make me great. Right. Which which actually really goes deep into the quite the, the conversations we had about Schindler's book. Yeah. If you I remember. Should, should, yeah. That, yeah. We talked about why do, you walk the, why do you walk the old lady across the street, right? Mm-hmm. Is it because you're trying to step on her face to get to heaven? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it seems yeah, like she, that. She's, a, she's just a means. Yeah. A means for your own. Yeah. Yeah. For emotions. your own your own mercenary... Um, pursuit of heaven mm-hmm. rather mm-hmm. than your rather than love right? right which 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 is just a misunderstanding of, of, of christianity yeah so i don't know if that's yeah. what's happening but that's the reason he goes right so he's yeah. going to give this 200 dollars and and True. and i think he i think alyosha does like to make up for his brother yeah no i think he i think alyosha is legitimately yeah when he, when he gets there and he realizes the whole the whole story i mean he he is um, he basically says, if Dimitri doesn't come and, and kneel before you and, and apologize, he's no brother of mine. Right. He says that, yeah. 224. I'll make him or he is no brother of mine. And this is where he kind of reveals. Because he says, he's going to apologize to you. He's going he's gonna to kiss your feet in the marketplace, any marketplace you pick. Right. Yeah. And I'm thinking, like, Dimitri is not going to do that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, but the way that he says it, the captain, right, yeah. um, thinks that that he's sent directly from Dimitri. It's not until this moment in 224 yeah. that he says, he'll, I'll make him do it or he's no brother of mine. Then he says, aha, then it's only a suggestion. Yeah. There's a recognition that Alyosha is not here because Dimitri sent him right. all of a sudden. And so Dimitri, hopefully you, you... Dimitri didn't even talk about this, tell you. He yeah. found out from Katerina. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, and Dimitri, or sorry, Alyosha got a lot of this information from the father who sort of opened up yeah the general opened up to him or the, the officer opened up to him and told him this this really heart-wrenching um um scene kind that of occurred. funny scene though i mean, I mean kind of funny but <laughs> but also i mean but but so this is this is what i so it was it was kind of funny until the beard the drag school, was funny yeah but then all the schoolboys came out and right. his and his son sees this yeah and this is like an like this, this, this deep moment for Alusha. At yeah. least this is the way his father sees. Yeah, it. yeah, and I think, I think, I think so. I think there's a sense in which Dimitri is the reason that Alusha is now sick and delirious. Uh huh. Right. So uh-huh. and 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 has this like chest, you know, problem. So heart, because heart problem, heart perhaps. problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So so what happens is you get. He's he's seeing he's seeing this happen, and he comes out and he says, "You know, that's my father. Don't do this. Forgive him. Forgive him." Um, right? And, and he's he's begging, and he's and he's he grabbing his hand. His, grabbing Dimitri's hand, and yeah. he's kissing his hand and saying, "Please don't do this." And Dimitri Dimitri just blows him off and says, "Get out of here." Um, and so Dimitri kind of beats this this old man up, and here's here's what I thought was just. And, and the, real quick though, yeah, the yeah. reason he beats him up is, I I think I, it, I, I mean because I think kind of like he was pissed off and that guy was there. He, well, he's pissed off, but he, this is the guy that um, uh, Theodore he used to sort of work for Theodore. He had oh, IOUs, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Theodore was kind of using, yeah, right. So, and it seems like apparently though he didn't he didn't really have any say in this. It was he's just kind of. He was just a person that yeah. Yeah. Theodore and everyone. He was, he was just trying to feed his family. Yeah, yeah. right, <laughs> um, right. But but that's the sort of the occasion of I think, I why about that. why yeah. he's he's angry with them because Dimitri thinks he's trying to work with Theodore to to destroy him, to destroy him, like basically get him. Which is actually true of Grushenka. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. But he right. doesn't beat Grushenka. Yeah, no. Although no, he, he planned he, to beat her. He went, he went to, he went to but, beat her, but then he stayed. But he stayed. <laughs> um, but here, but this was the way this was put was was just heart wrenching to me. Yeah, um, yeah. Bottom of two twenty six. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but at that moment in the square, when he kissed his hand, at that moment, my Ilusha had grasped all that justice means. That truth entered into him and crushed him forever, sir. The captain said hotly again, 
with a sort of frenzy. And he struck his right fist against his left palm as though he wanted to show how the truth crushed Elusha. <laughs> that very day, sir, he fell ill with fever and was delirious all night. And he goes on. And, and so, so, so Il, Elusha does this, tries to like destroy these schoolboys who are making fun of him. Mm -hmm. And he said, this is just such a horrible, mean town. I can't wait until I grow up and I get money and power and I can come back and I can destroy them. And then his dad says, no, that's a sin. That's a sin. He said, okay, well, I can't get back at him like that. So here's what I'll do. I'll go and I'll grow up, get a bunch of money, come back, hold my sword to their throat and say, I could kill you right now, but I'm not because right. it's a sin. Instead, I'll forgive you. That's an even worse sort of like, you know, retribution. Uh -huh. The worst sort of revenge is that I can give you forgiveness even though I can kill you. So it's this like, I mean, it's, it's Nietzsche way before Nietzsche. Yeah. It's that I can use forgiveness as like one of the greatest acts of like power. Yeah. Where the weak can become powerful. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Where, the and, weak, where the weak oh. become powerful over the true strong. This yeah. is, that's Nietzsche. Yeah. yeah. And so, th I mean, this was, and then, and then he goes on to say, just, I mean, you, you see, you see this boy completely destroyed by this experience completely destroyed in, in, in body because the boys throw a stone, try to hit his head, but they hit his chest yeah. just above his heart. Interesting, important to keep that yep. in mind. This is, uh, did you think of uh, the oh, dream yeah. of the ridiculous oh, man yeah. of Dostoevsky? Definitely. Where, Definitely. Uh, I mean, if you if, if you guys, after you finish the Karamazov brothers, yeah. read the short story, it, it has to do with the head and the heart and things like that. Yeah, so, so I highly recommend... Uh, Taking a look at that short story, but so, so that's yeah. why I think that's an important point because yeah. that's it's not, not another. His head. It's another important point. In the, this boy, this boy is destroyed by what Dimitri did, not in his head, but but in his heart, mm -hmm. and I think that that's worth and seeing how this this effect of Dimitri has actually had effects, or this action of Dimitri has had effects well beyond what Dimitri ever could have imagined. Right, and and. Yeah, so Dimitri is responsible for Elusha's, uh, uh, you know, um, pain and his suffering, and which which seems like uh, again a microcosm of of, of Zosima's principle that yeah. you're responsible yeah. for everything. And I think what's what's this is I think this is sort of really beautiful, but how this plays out throughout the book, and you get it here. Um, Alyosha comes and realizes, but I'm responsible for Dimitri. So I can be responsible for Elusha, right? Uh -huh. It's because Dimitri has wronged Elusha, and I'm responsible for Dimitri. Elusha is now my my doing, yeah. right? His, yeah. his his harm is my doing. Right? Yeah, and, and 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 interestingly, I think he, he already has that idea even before he recognizes the situation, because yeah. when Elusha bites him to his bone, yeah. the amazing thing, like that, this is it's really a. a the, the the scene with the school yeah. boys oh, yeah, is, is, is just a sign of patience, right? Because what does he do? He continues to love Elusha despite throwing rocks and at his that, head. And that is what pisses Elusha off, is that he doesn't fight back or throw back. And yeah. since he's acting in a way completely different from the way that he expects people to act. Right. And But I think that, that, that the mystery of love is itself... You know, it, it stands in the face of the world of sin and it and it it compels. Yeah. It, it compels, but it also it's it's something that you look at and as you look at it it just makes you wonder at why this would be, but it's also beautiful and yeah. and, and you're you're attracted to it. There's a craziness. Like it, it actually reminded me of, of the, the, the little flowers of Saint Francis, if you've if you've ever read that. Mm -hmm. There's a story of uh, Bernard, Saint Bernard, who was the first um, the first follower of St. Francis, who was a rich dude who gave up all his money and said, forget it, I'm going I'm to live with you. Like the first Franciscan, right. basically, yeah. Yeah. right? Um, and uh, Francis sends him to this town where he, he's supposed to like preach the gospel, and he goes to the town square, and he just sits there and smiles at people. And he does it for like three days, and people are looking at this guy, and they're like, who the hell is this? I mean, they don't know what Franciscans yeah. are. They don't oh, exist yeah, sure. yet, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. And, and, and pretty soon, interestingly enough, the schoolboys start to make fun of him, and to sort of like throw rocks at him. Yeah. And what does he do? He keeps smiling at them. And then they start beating him up. And then the adults start getting into, into it and start th throwing rocks at him and beating him up. And he's there for like days where he's just like in the town square smiling. And he continues to smile at people. And they just beat the snot out of him. And finally, 
people start defending him yeah. <laughs> against the other people, yeah. right? Uh, even the people who were fighting him before, and all of a sudden everybody loves him. But there's, he, didn't, he didn't say anything. He just yeah. smiled at yeah. them while they beat the crap out of him. Yeah. I mean, there's something about the mystery of love. And I think that that, yeah. that, that scene, uh, I really recommend reading it. I don't remember what chapter it is in yeah. The Little Flowers yeah. of St. Francis. But it, it, it makes me think huh. of this scene, right? Where hmm. the patience of the person, which, which patience and love are in some sense the same thing. Right, yeah. Is is a mystery that transforms them, right? yeah. and so I think uh, here's the question: Can the love of Ayosha transform Elusha, despite the fact that the sinfulness of Dimitri oh, transformed him oh, the other way? Right? Oh, you, you're <laughs> I'm predicting you're things. smoking the right joint. <laughs> That's probably a bad analogy. Uh, yeah. Five in the morning, six yeah. in the morning now. Yeah. Here, no, you, that's the right question. That, okay, that is. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to give give a lot away, but um, um, yeah, part part four. Uh-huh. Look at part four. Just just to, to um, book ten. Um, you have um, the schoolboy, the lost dog, Elusha's bedside. Uh, there's a whole chapter titled Elusha. And Mm -hmm. it's because it's in the the table of contents, look at the very last chapter of the book. Oh yeah. Yeah. Elusha's funeral. Yeah. Okay. So I, I don't want to, I don't want to, but that, that was the exact question to ask. Can Alyosha's love redeem Dimitri's, um, yeah, because, because it's obvious that the two, the unity between the two, the, well, the unity between everyone, maybe, that we can screw people up with our sin, yeah. but we can also redeem yeah. them with our love. Yeah, right? and yeah. I, I think that's the that's the point that that's being made here. Yeah, that's kind of the abstract point, which is lived out in this narrative. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Good stuff. Well, on that.